Ladies and gentlemen, Webull has now enabled futures trading, and we're going to cover exactly what you need to know here in this video. A very big step, in my opinion, for Webull, but let's get into it. So you're probably going to ask the question of how do I even do this? What do I have to do? Well, there's a couple of steps that we want to cover before we get into it. So right now, I currently have the Micro E-mini Russell 2000 June 2024 contracts pulled up. What we're going to do is we're actually going to trade the Micro E-mini S&Ps today to show you an example, but we're going to get to that in just a minute. I want to cover what's more important first to frame us, make sure we're in the right spot, make sure we have our account balance all good to go, make sure we have the buying power good to go, and then get to the actual trading portion, which if you want to skip ahead, that'll be in just a few minutes. Why is that the case? Because it's not as simple as just logging into your existing Webull account and now starting to trade futures like that. It does take a little bit. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to request or at least apply for a futures trading account. Now, I went ahead and did this inside of the app so you can kind of see uh, on the side how I'm going about doing this. But once you've done that, let's cover some of the stats, the fees, the symbols we can trade so that we know what we're getting ourselves into. Okay, so as of right now, they're offering free CME market data. Apparently there's low margins, competitive commissions, and a transparent cost. All of this, or you'll see what I mean when we actually go to go ahead and trade. Um, it'll be fairly simple to see like what the costs are because if you are trading futures, there will be fees. Now, if you are familiar with Webull, and options trading and stock trading, you know, you're not really looking at a lot of fees and commissions. Maybe there's a, a few cents here and there that stack up, but not much at all. You can almost say that it's zero commissions completely. Now, when you go to the future side, there are going to be things like costs and commissions that you're going to have to be aware of these fees that can add up. But from what I'm seeing, they are not very, very high. And so this seems to be pretty good course, you can go to competitors, there's other platforms out there, everyone's going to have different prices and commission structures. But from what they've offered, or what they have to offer, at least initially, I kind of like what I see. So you're going to get the same things that you've got on the platform. And we've have some older videos that cover Webull's platform and how that stuff works. And it hasn't changed dramatically since some of those videos. But if we need to make a new updated video at some point, we can certainly do that. Just let us know in the comments. Now, as I scroll our way down, Okay, they are registered with the FCM, Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and an NFA member, National Futures Association. Now, when it comes to the different futures you can trade, here is the place that you want to be paying attention to. So, in terms of when you're looking at indexes, you have E mini mid cap futures, which not 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 a very popular uh, thing to trade, at least in my experience. But hey, it's there. You've got the E mini S and P's, E mini Nasdaqs. Micro S&Ps, Micro NASDAQs, Russell, and also E-mini and Micro Dow. So you can essentially trade S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, and the Russell 2000 with the regular E-mini structure where it shows you the minimum tick size or the micro structure, which is essentially a cheaper, more affordable way for a beginner to start. So that's what we'll trade today because I don't really, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm just going to be kind of randomly trading. I'm not going to be trading something that I see because I have specific setups that I follow and all that stuff. So I'm, you know, for the sake of this video, I can't guarantee there's going to be a good setup. So I'm going to trade the micro or you know, the micro E-mini S&Ps so that if things don't go my way, I'm not going to lose a lot of money. Now, in that case though, you have multipliers shown here, settlements, trading hours. The tick size is what everyone's going to get caught up in. This is the, like when, when it moves a tick, as we say, this is what your P and L swing is going to do. So if you are trading the E-mini S&Ps, every tick, okay, which is essentially 0.25, which we'll, we'll, you'll see that in a second, every tick is going to move your P and L 1250. So if you get, you know, 20, 30 ticks in your, in a, in a direction, you know, you're talking a couple hundred dollar swings. Okay. Which that's 20, 30 ticks is not that insane. And we see more than that usually in a day's range, right? So just be aware of that. Uh, and that's if you were to go with one contract. So careful, make sure you're, you're watching this, but this is a good reference spot. Trading hours, 6 p.m. to 5 p.m. You're like, wait, what the heck is that? Now this is Eastern time. You're like, how does that make any sense? On Sunday evening at 6 p.m., these futures open at 6 p.m. And they will essentially trade until 5 p.m. the next day. Okay, until Monday at five, and then they'll reopen at Monday at six. 
there's that one hour maintenance period that you have to be aware of. Other than that, if you are in a position for a swing trade, you can essentially get in Sunday at 6 p.m. and stay in until Friday, 4.59 p.m. and get out. And then that's that's an entire week. Now you've had you know one hour maintenance blocks every evening throughout Monday through Tuesday, Monday through Thursday. But technically they're trading continuously, if you, you know, almost continuously, from Sunday evening all the way to Friday at 5 p.m. Okay? Your off days are from 5 p.m. Friday until 5.59 or 6 p.m. Sunday. Okay, so that's stocks. Uh, if you want to look at like the overall indexes, agriculture, soybeans, corn, uh, hogs, lean hogs, live cattle, oats. So like, this is great. Great stuff here. You've got a lot of options there. You also have currencies you can trade, which is kind of cool. So you can trade the Australian dollar, British pound, Canadian, euro, um, euro versus USD, et cetera, different pairs, which is pretty cool. So you have that option as well. You can trade rates, so the two-year, the 10-year, the 30-year, all that stuff. But again, you can trade the micros on these as well, which is great. So if you're a beginner, you can technically start trading futures here with Weeble and not have to have a ton of money to put up. Metals, which is great as well. I love that. Energy, you can trade natural gas, crude oil, uh, et cetera. And then crypto, a couple crypto options here, Bitcoin, uh, ETH, and the futures as well. Now, they have the, sorry, the micros and the um, the regular. These, the micros would be a good idea, in my opinion, if you are starting out, if you are more experienced, have more capital, then you can go all out. Um, that's again, if you're trading futures. Now, you may just trade Bitcoin itself, depending upon where you trade and stuff. We will, you can trade uh, crypto as well. So, you know, there's, how much of a need is there really for this? I don't know. Maybe there's a lot for you. Maybe there's not. But either way, this is what's available as of right now. Okay. If you go to weeble.com slash futures, okay, weeble.com slash futures, that is this page. Okay. I will, if I don't forget, I will leave a link to that below. And I will also leave a link to Weeble down below if you want to check them out, sign up. I believe you still get some free stocks. I don't know what the exact promos are these days, but you're getting some free stocks in the process for signing up. That's their incentive. Now, stocks, all these different things. When you go over, look for the product code. This is what you're going to be typing in as the ticker symbol. Now, once you know that, you're good. So if you want to trade, let's so in our case, we're going to trade the micro S&P. Okay, so I need to go know MES. Now there's another piece to this we're going to get into. Beyond that, they also have more. If they ha if you want to learn more and you're really, really new to futures, we have some videos, but we both got some videos as well, which I like to see because they actually seem to care about, you know, the education behind what you're getting into, which is important. And I think that's also part of like, I don't know, they're like, need to make sure that they're educating people who are getting involved in their platform and potentially losing a lot of money. Either way, now I jump back to my Webull desktop. Now you can use it on mobile. It doesn't really matter. You can go wherever you want and trade this stuff, but you will have to have a futures account. Okay. So in the top right, I will take a screenshot up in the top right, or actually I can move my thing because it's kind of cut off. You will see as I move ourselves over, Okay, you see my account now? See how it says futures? This is not going to be your regular individual brokerage account. You'll have to open a separate futures account. Now, what I did is I then transferred money from my brokerage account over here, and the minimum amount was $1,000. That may change, but as of the time I am filming this video, the minimum amount was $1,000. So you could not open a futures account, or you can open it, you can apply for it, but you have to then fund it with a thousand dollars in order to be able to use it. Okay. So now you see the bottom, we have futures BP, which is my futures buying power. It's a thousand dollars and 15 cents. Cool. Now I know. Okay. So make sure that you have now the futures account. That's if you went through the app, like I showed before, and I signed up for the futures account and took, a, I think, a day or so for it to get approved. And then the money was essentially, I believe, once my, I had settled cash, in, when I had settled cash in my individual brokerage account, it took like five minutes for the money to then transfer to the, the futures account. And now it's instantly available as buying power. So the only problem is that if you have no money in your Rebel account, you have to transfer money in, which may take a couple of days, a couple of business days. Once it then settles as settled cash, then you can transfer it to the futures account and use it. Okay. So what you want to do now is however you trade. Now this is, this is my customized layout. There's a lot of ways you can go about it. However you trade, you want to go to the search bar and you want to type in a ticker symbol 
or you want to add to your watch list, however you want to do it. Now, if I type in MES, okay, you'll see that it has Mesoblast, Mesa Air, all these things. That where, where are the micro EMEs? Now they are, if you scroll down, they're down here. But if you were to type in before MES, a slash, that's kind of like the, that, that will signal we're talking futures here. So now you'll have all these options. What I do want to make sure you're aware of though, is that they're all going to be expirations to these contracts. So these futures contracts every so often, every couple of months they expire. So you just can't really hold through an expiration of a contract. So when I click on the top option right now, it is going to be the main June, 2024. I know it's small. I'll see if I can zoom in. It is the micro e mini S and P 500 main June, 2024 it's April. So I have some time, but as we get closer to that expiration, we want to make sure you're aware of that and then make sure you switch over to the next expiration. Once those contracts expire uh, and, and all that stuff, just make sure you're aware of that. Not a big deal. Right now, if you're day trading, if you're swing trading, it might make a lot more sense to look further into the contracts you are specifically trading, okay? In this case, not a big deal. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I have my trade widget right here. I've got my order book level two, I guess I, you could get level two down there and I have time in sales. So let's say that I think that we're gonna keep balancing up. Okay, I think we're gonna go up. I'm going to go along now. See where it says this down at the bottom, contracts. I'm going to go with one contract. If I can continue lower, I can, I can set a limit price. I can set a time and force as good to a canceled or day. Well, I'm going to go with day because I don't want to, you know, have this order, you know, in case I forget or something happens. Okay. So let's just go in and let's set a limit price at, let's see. It has it at uh, 50, 21. Let's go with a 50, 20 and see if we can get filled at 50, 20 and uh, put the order in. So one contract by M-E-S-M-4, boom, it's gonna say buy, it's gonna go through and show me my futures buying power, margin used, estimated transaction fee of 51 cents, boom. So now I know, okay, it's gonna cost me 51 cents for this. My bad, I actually could not trade the micro E-minis with only $1,000. Didn't realize that until now. On other futures platforms, you can trade the micro minis with a very small amount of funds, but in Weeble's case, they're going to tell you what amount of margin you're going to use. So I just overlooked it for a second and didn't realize. If you look down on this, we're going to jump over and trade the micro e-mini Russells now as an example. If you look down here at the bottom, see where it says futures buying power $1,000 because I just transferred $1,000 into the account. Margin used 715. So if I was to go with one contract, that's all I'm going to use. If I go to two contracts, See now it says 14.30. So I, that's over my buying power. I can't do this. I can't trade two contracts of the Russell. So one contract, I'm gonna go put a limit price. I'm gonna, let's just say that I think we're gonna go up for the sake of this video. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put my order in at right here, 1970. Click on buy. It's gonna go to the confirmation. I can change my settings so I don't believe these show up if you don't want them to show up. Click on buy. Now we're gonna have our, limit order set right here. I can now adjust this to go up and I'm going to do that for the sake of uh, getting us in here, but let's see, let's move it up and let's see if we can get filled. So let's adjust, move up 51 cents. And now if we get filled, we will get filled. So the point that I was trying to make before was now we're in. Okay. So see now we're in what I was trying to say before was that when it comes to getting in the barrier to entry is a little bit larger. I should say the, you, you can't just get in and trade with hundred dollars minimum amount for your account is a thousand dollars, but that does not even allow you to trade the micro e mini S and P's. So you have to have more funds and pay attention for all we have to do is log in, go to the platform, jump down to the trade widget, which is, this is the classic trade widget right here. And you can see, go to the contracts that you want, search them up, go to see where it says margin and enter how many contracts you would want to trade, see how much it's going to cost you and go from there. That's what I would do just to get a sense of how much money you're going to need to trade what you want to trade. In our case, the micro e mini Russells are really kind of all we have to at our disposal for right now until I deposit more money in the account. So this as of right now is not the most cost effective, I guess I should say. I don't know if I want to say cost effective, but in terms of a capital perspective, there are other platforms out there, futures platforms that allow you to trade with a lot less funds. Uh, so you, you could get access, for example, for 50 or a hundred bucks to the futures contracts that I was just showing, trying to trade just a second ago. So something to keep in mind, this is certainly 
awesome that they have it, but it is going to cost a bit more or it's going to be, I don't say cost a bit more. It's going to require more capital, at least initially to trade. So now we are now down $14. So you can see my position. It has a one and then next to the one, it has a negative 1301 at the price that I'm in. So we are currently down. Let me see if I go into the price ladder and I can go in and set my stops if I wanted to, or I can then put a take profit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and say, hey, I don't want to lose. If we fall underneath this area right here, I don't want to lose more than this. So I can go in and set a stop loss in the, with, a, with the price ladder widget. And now it's right here. And it currently has my P&L on the top as well. If I wanted to get rid of this, I can click on the X and get rid of that. And I can jump up on the, so, on the top. I can see my little P, which means that's where my position, my average is. And I can put a sell limit north of that and say, hey, if we get up there, I want to sell to much as towards the top of the range. That's maybe what I want to do. So as you can see, fairly straightforward. It's just like you can trade on Webull, how you would trade stocks or really how you would trade options. But now you are trading futures. If you have any further questions or want to learn more, we have other videos on the channel talking about the different trading futures, the different trading widgets to enter trades, exit trades. We went with the classic trade entry and then the price ladder to also set our potential take profit or stop loss. In this case, I'm going to leave this for a minute. I don't really care. I'm only down $13. But if I was to trade a contract that was a little more volatile or a larger contract, for example, let's go back in here. If I was to trade not the e, not the micro Russell, if I was to trade the e mini Russells, each tick is a $5 move versus a 50 cent move. Okay, keep that one in mind. But if you are only going to deposit $1,000, it's going to limit the futures contracts you can trade at least initially. If you build your account size up, you'll obviously have more buying power. Just make sure you're aware again of at, on the trade widget, we have the margin used per one contract. Just make sure you're aware of that so you don't get caught up in uh, or you, you end up, you know what you're getting into and you deposit enough funds in order to trade the contracts you want to trade. Thanks so much for watching. Leave any questions down below. Happy to have you here and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.